So ever since we got the Evo 10 officially done, or not done done, but like running, motor in, all that good stuff, there's been one thing I don't like on the car. Today, I wanna fix that one thing. And I know what everyone's thinking, I know what everyone's gonna say in the comments, enough Evo 10 content, move on to the Evo 8, which I really wanna do, but I don't have the fuel pump yet, so I can't put everything together. We need, we need to get the Evo 10 done before we jump into the Evo 8. So yesterday we got the full ceramic coat done, still drying or curing. It's gonna be probably two more days in the shop without driving the car. It's been nonstop like sprinkling, raining, snowing a little bit here and there. And I cannot get this thing wet until it's fully cured. So I'm gonna give it two or three more days. Well, I guess there's been two things that I haven't really been liking. You know what? Let's call it three things. Three things since I got this build done now that I'm looking at it that I haven't liked. These hood dampers gotta go. They gotta be changed color. I was gonna do that a few videos ago when we were vinyl wrapping the hood, but I ran out of time. So I'm gonna try to tackle that today. Second thing, that needs to go black. ETS three inch MAF housing. It looks good, but it doesn't really match. That's gonna go black. And the third thing is this intake manifold. I regret not doing that black when the whole car was apart. We have to spend a little bit of time now, tear that thing off. I hope it's not too big of a chore now that the car's all together. I don't think it's gonna be all that bad to get the intake manifold off. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna be coating or if I'm going to be powder coating those two things. The hood dampers are going to be vinyl wrapped, snow camo on one side, the dark camo on the other side. As far as the MAF and intake manifold go, I think I'm gonna, I don't know, I'll probably Cerakote them just to do it right the first time. I want everything to match, all the blocks to match. If I powder coat it, it might look a little bit different and I, I don't really want that. All right, we got both of the hood struts done. Let's move on to some coating. So let's pull off the MAF housing, pull off the intake manifold. Might as well do the throttle body too. It's connected right to the intake and if the intake manifold is black, throttle body's not, it's not gonna look right. So we're gonna dive deep and, oh, I just got a good idea. That guy right there, I'm gonna vinyl wrap that. All right, what was I saying? I forget, let's just pull off some parts and get to coating. We finally got the intake manifold off. I'm not gonna lie, straight pain in the ass. There's two brackets that hold the intake manifold to the block. Three bolts on the very bottom of the motor that are a pain in the ass to get to. I had to just bend one of those brackets out of the way to get the intake manifold off. This guy right here, straight pain in the ass, guys. This is all the stuff we're gonna be coating, MAF housing, fuel lines, intake manifold. All these hoses and stuff I'm gonna obviously pull off and then we're gonna go through, sandblast all this stuff and get to coating. All right, we got all the parts cleaned up. I decided to not sandblast the intake manifold. Same exact concept as the valve cover. I don't want a little bit of sand to still be in there, go through my motor. I'd rather just spend a lot of time with the prep and just clean it with a wire brush. All of these guys are sandblasted. What I'm actually gonna do right now is pull out the oven and throw everything in the oven. You don't need an oven for what we're about to do for the Cerakote, but it's so damn cold in the shop. Those things are gonna take forever to dry off. So I'm gonna pull out the oven, throw them in the oven for at 400 degrees for like 20 minutes and get all that water evaporated.
I know guys, I know I'm getting a little bit carried away by doing the fuel lines as well, but if the intake manifold is gonna be black, I might as well make the fuel lines black as well. Not that much work because you gotta, we gotta pull them off anyway. This here is the stuff we are gonna be using to coat everything. It is Cerakote C7600 Glacier Black. This stuff is absolutely amazing. It'll be linked down below. Same exact stuff we used on all the ETS hot parts kit and the turbo as well. All those parts turned out absolutely amazing and I want everything to match. I was gonna powder coat it and then I was like, I want it all to match. So I decided just to use the same exact product. I'll have the stuff linked down below. Make sure you guys go pick some up. It's high temp so it can be used on exhaust manifolds. It's kind of what it's made for but you can also use it on anything else that's not high temp. I was gonna do the throttle body as well, but there's so many parts on there we'd have to pull off and we'd also have to drain the whole coolant system if we wanted to do the throttle body. So I decided just to leave that on the car. But as soon as we get these few parts coated, this whole engine bay I think is gonna look pretty much exactly how we want it. I mean, it'd be nice to do that stuff right there black as well, but pulling apart a power steering pump to a of black, kind of a lot of work. While these parts are breaking in the oven, let's go ahead and kind of run through exactly what we are gonna be doing. I have this HVLP touch-up spray gun right here, 0.8 millimeter nozzle. I'll have this link down below. I have a few paint strainers, and then of course the Cerco. If you're gonna use this stuff, make sure you shake it up a ton. What up? Hi. I'm vlogging. I almost called you a hoe. You almost called me a hoe? I understand. Okay, goodbye. Wait. What? I wanted to say something. Okay. Okay, goodbye. What I was saying, make sure you shake this up a lot. If you don't, it's not gonna work. I've already experienced that when I did all the hot parts for the turbo kit make sure you shake it up. I would recommend like five minutes. All right, so we have our gun all set up. Cerakote is inside the gun. These guys haven't been in here for maybe 15 minutes. I'm gonna pull them out. Oh yeah, they're definitely uh, definitely a bit warm. So I'm gonna pull them out, hang them from the ladder, let them cool down completely, and then we can get to coating. Cerakoting is extremely, extremely easy, just like powder coating. You don't want too much fluid to come out. I'll kind of show you guys as I'm spraying. But yeah, you don't want too much fluid to come out. Cerakote is a very, very thin product when it's fully cured. It lays on very, very thin. That's why you didn't really see me mask off anything because there's no need, not even threads. Anything like that, you can Cerakote right over and you'll be good to go. We got both lines hanging. I'm gonna spray these out first just because it's gonna be a little bit more technical. It's kind of a weird thing to coat, but they should be pretty easy. All right guys, we got everything sprayed out. It all turned out really, really nice. I did end up masking off the intake manifold. I didn't want a bunch of Cerakote getting inside. I know there's a little bit of oil residue inside and I don't know if that would sit well if it got into my motor. So I decided to mask off the big ports. Everything turned out really, really nice. I'm super pumped with how it came out. So to actually run the car, we need to wait five full days, but to handle it, to like touch it, ship it, whatever, we can wait 24 hours. So tomorrow evening, in about like 26, 27 hours from now, we can reassemble the car. We put it all back together. We still can't drive the car anyways because it is pouring down rain right now and you cannot get any water on the body of the car from the ceramic coat. We can definitely get the car all back together. So I will see you guys then. So it's about 25, 26 hours later. All the parts are dry enough to touch, to handle. These things turned out so damn good. Here's the intake manifold. The only thing I wish I would have maybe done is clean up some of this casting right here, but Honestly, not a big deal. This thing turned out so good. Fuel line number one, number two, and then the ETS math. Damn, that looks good. So the first thing we're gonna do is put the intake manifold back on the car. I'm not gonna reassemble anything on this manifold. We have a few hoses and whatnot. I'm just gonna wait to put all that on after I get the, the manifold itself back on the car. It looks so good, damn. The main reason I decided to Cerakote everything instead of powder coat is with powder coat, you have to spend a lot of time masking threaded holes, anything with tight tolerances. Cerakote, you don't need to worry about that at all. It's super nice, it's a really, really thin layer, a really thin film of coating that goes on it, so we didn't have to mask off anything if we didn't want. I did mask off that right there and this other gasket surface. Like I said earlier, I didn't want Cerakote to get in there because it's kind of dirty in there and I didn't want Cerakote to build up on that oil.
So that is how the manifold looks all mounted up. We got to this point and then there was something that just really, really stood out like a sore thumb. And that was this dipstick. It's really, really crusty. If it was a nice silver, like a nice clean silver, I wouldn't mind it. But if I'm gonna coat it, I'm gonna coat it black. Maybe one day I'll just do a whole motor black. That'd be pretty sick. So I'm gonna go ahead and sandblast this thing. I'm not gonna be stereo coating this. I'm just gonna spray some black spray paint on it. I don't really feel like waiting a whole nother day just to mount my dipstick. So let's get this thing blasted up, paint it, and let it dry, throw it back on the car. I just threw some bolts on the ends of it. Obviously don't want any sand to get inside this. All right, while that dipstick tube is drying, let's throw some more stuff back together on the Evo. Intake manifold is on, all the fuel lines and all that stuff is on. I didn't put the fuel rail back on yet because we do have to swap injectors out here soon. Last thing we can install is the ETS three inch map housing. So let's get this bad boy on and see how everything looks. It's already looking absolutely amazing. It looks so good with all the black stuff. I think that completely, completely changed the look of this engine bay. It's exactly what I was going for. The only thing really left that I would ever want to Cerakote or make black is the cylinder head and the power steering pump because you can, you can see those. If that was black and the head was black, that'd be pretty sick. Let's be honest though, that's way too much work for what it's worth. Maybe if the motor was out of the car, if this thing ever blows up again, maybe I'll do it then. But even still then, it's so much work. I'm gonna hold off on putting the fuel rail back on until we throw the injectors in. And we also have the adjustable fuel pressure regulator to install as well. We do not have the double pumper yet. We still don't have it. I don't know when that's gonna come in. I really want it to come in soon so we can just get this thing done out of the shop, tuned, make some good power. I wanna get on a dyno. There's an all-wheel drive dyno here locally. I wanna get on the dyno, see what it actually makes for power on E85. If we can make 640, 650 at the wheels, that'd be insane. I think we can easily make that with on E85 with the turbo setup that we currently have. The fuel system we're doing can handle a lot much more than that, that it makes sense. Can handle quite a bit more than that. It can make quite a bit more power. The only thing we'd have to do is like the feed and return lines. Then we could probably go to like 800, but at that level, I'm gonna blow so much stuff up. Tranny, transfer, axles, clutch, all that stuff. All the drivetrain components, it's just not worth it. This is my daily driver. I drive this car every single day. I might be taking it down to California here within the next few weeks and it's got to be reliable so there's no point in going anything over like 650 should still be reliable once again fam i'll have the starter coat i use down in the description box below super high you can't even compare it to anything it's the highest quality i don't even know if there's any other ceramic coat companies but i just know starter coat is top of the line top notch you can't get any better than that so i'll have a link down below super good stuff perfect for turbo kits exhaust manifolds intake manifolds anything high temp is what i just did this is the air cure version they do have an oven cure that will cure like immediately it's kind of like powder coat but a lot thinner is the way i look at it so i'll have their website down below and then the exact model i used on the intake manifold and exhaust manifold down below as well hope you guys enjoyed today's video kind of thinking tomorrow we're going to throw the fuel system in or the injectors and fuel pressure regulator and then just push this car off to the side and get working on the evo 8 if you think we should start working on the evo 8 tomorrow or like really really soon drop a comment down below and let me know